check this out. I could do myself a leak angel in these. My wife's gonna love me tonight. So this is the type of area that we're going to be looking for. It's a uh, hardwood bush, and as you can see here, it's mainly maple. Uh, there's some odd beech and birch in there. Um, depending on how far south you are, these plants grow between zones 3 and 7. So you could be into some uh, hickory and oak trees. Um, you're going to want some well-drained acidic calcium-rich soil, such as this. And as you can see, there's lots of uh, trout lilies and trillium flowers in and around this area. So if you have those trees and you're within those growing zones, you have those plants that we've talked about that are in and around this area, you're on the right track to finding yourself some uh, wild ramps. So the first question is, what would a ramp leaf look like? How do I start even looking for it? You're going to find these oval shaped leaves and they're similar on the back as they are on the front. They got one vein right through the middle, approximately six to eight inches long and about an inch and a half to two inches wide. And they usually grow in small little clusters like this. And that's because in the fall when they flower, the flowers are going to drop and uh, they're going to distribute themselves in a small little cluster. So I'll show you what the bulb looks like here in just a minute. Okay, as you can see, there's that light green from the wild leeks that kind of sticks out from the dark green of the rest of the bush. And you'll find that it grows in conjunction with some trillium flowers. You will find a lot of trout lilies which grow in and amongst it as you can see here but the main thing that distinguishes wild leeks or ramps is when you break it smell it it smells like uh, garlic or onions so quite similarly to the provincial flower of Ontario which is the trillium here these wild leeks they take about five years to grow from seed so it's very, very important that when you harvest these, you're harvesting them sustainably. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to harvest these leek bulbs. And I'm going to show you how to do that just with your hand here. And you reach down and dig around. The soil typically in this type of environment is quite loamy and easy to work around. Just going to reach down in there, just like you're picking an onion from the garden. And there you have it. So there's the leaves, and we have our bulb, which typically has a sheath and some roots on the bottom. And you can clean all that up. Now, like I said, these leaves here, once these leaves start to die off, these bulbs here are going to get bigger and store all the energy. So if you're looking specifically to only harvest the bulbs for personal use, um, you're going to want to scout out these areas and come back once these leaves die off okay so we're going to go ahead and we're going to collect that 10 percent of this patch and uh we'll see you when i'm done okay so let's talk about some lookalikes that you're going to find in this particular area okay um i guess one of the main ones here is going to be the trout lily as i mentioned before and you can see why they call it the trout lily because of the, the pattern on the, uh, on the leaf. It has a very similar shape, kind of a narrow um, oval shape. Um, now the difference here, and yes it is a little bit pinker on the bottom, the difference here is when you go to dig it up, these here have a very long stringy root system that goes down to a little bulb. Now they are edible, so if you eat one, not going to be in any trouble. They are an emetic, so if you eat too many, you could get sick. But uh, they are rather difficult to gather. And uh, when you break them open, the biggest thing is they do not smell 
like onion. Okay, so what are some things that you can do with uh, wild leeks? Well, you can eat them fresh. If you really want to piss off your wife in the bedroom with stinky breath. You can eat them dried, which is what I'm going to be doing. I'm actually going to be saving both the bulbs and the leaves for uh, wild edible uh, survival trips. And you can check out some of our videos on uh, Blackwater Bushcraft's page on when we only eat wild edibles and sustain ourselves out in the wilderness. Um, and what a lot of people do is they freeze them. Um, they freeze them for later use for soups and stews, uh, quiches, all that type of stuff. You can, I'm sure you can find lots of uh, recipes on the World Wide Web. So yeah, there's lots of uses for uh, wild leeks. And this is just one of many piles of moose droppings up around this area. And uh, just something to keep in mind if you are a moose country, especially around this time of year, and the next month is calving season. So if you do see a small little calf, mummy will not be too far behind. So just something to uh, keep in mind, keep your distance uh, when you're out here. Know your surroundings. Okay, so I'm up here on the high ground and I look down and see some pretty green areas right there. Cross our fingers. Check this out. I could do myself a leak angel in these, except then I would ruin the leaves and I wouldn't be able to eat them. And over here, you can smell this patch. There's a little patch there. And you can see all that green in through there. So I'm going to spend the next while collecting uh, my 10% quota. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in a bit. I probably took about uh, a tenth of 1% of everything there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go wash these down with some lake water and uh, I'll just show you here the sheath. There's a sheath on the bottom of these. When you take this sheath off, peel it back, pinch off the bottom and you get that nice clear root right there. some fresh maple Canadian cheddar cheese. Just gonna peel some of that slime off. And just raw, right on there. What a seasonal treat. My wife's gonna love me tonight. Okay, so here we have our washed and peeled uh, wild leeks. We're going to bring these home and slice them up and put them in the dehydrator. Okay, so we're back home. I've got my dehydrator, a bunch of different types of trays here, and I have my wild leeks, ramps. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissors, I'm going to snip off the bottom of all these, put them into my bowl, slice them up, and then divvy them amongst the trays here. I'll show you when I'm uh, at that point. Okay, so I just wanted to show you here, I've got my bulbs, got my leaves, and what I'm actually doing, um, some people slice them lengthwise across, almost like a green onion. What I do is I slice them open, and that way you can access the layers. So you just take your layers, Put them in just like this and they're still thin layers and they actually dry nicely like this and then you have larger pieces of onion for your soups and stews rather than little small little minced uh, bits so uh, that's the way that I do it it's not the only way but uh, 
I find they turn out quite nice like that. Okay, so I've got my dehydrator on. 12 hours, 105 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what we're going to start with. You always want to go low and slow. So this is only about uh, half of the bulbs that I have. And obviously at this time of the season, it's early, they're small. Um, but I've got the tray here and then a bunch of trays of the leaves. So I'm gonna have to do a couple batches of these. You can also do them in the oven the same way, uh, low and slow on some uh, trays. Or you could open air dry them with some mosquito netting. But it's pouring rain out here today, so this is the way that we're gonna do it. And this is just one of the ways, it's not the only way. Um, obviously this is not the way that our ancestors would have dried them, but with modern technology, this is what we're going to do. See you in 12 hours. Okay, it's 12 hours later, and here I have my very crispy, you can kind of hear that, ramp bulbs that have dried very nicely. I'm going to uh, store them in this little old spice container here, and my dried leaves. As you can hear, those are dried to a crisp as well. I'm going to uh, start sticking them into this mason jar until it's uh, full. So I'll see you when that's completed and I'll be putting another batch of these on. Okay, overnight. so here we have our ramp bulbs, wild leek bulbs, and the leaves. Now these leaves filled this all the way up to the top. If you have a food processor, that'll work too. All I've done, it has it really taking me that long as I've just gone around and snipped these up so it went from up here all the way down here and keep in mind too when everything is dried it packs a punch uh, much more than uh, if they were fresh they're dried so you don't require as much of these for the same flavoring as you would uh, fresh okay hey guys just want to say thanks for watching there's endless possibilities that you can do here with uh, some of these dried wild ramps. So again, I hope this is uh, giving you some inspiration into getting outdoors, finding yourself some wild edibles. And uh, again, thanks for watching.